What's up, my people? This week, the new mega-budget Lord of the Rings series called The Rings of Power is set to debut on Amazon Prime. The story will be focused on the second age of Middle-earth, and while it'll be based on a collection of works by J.R.R. Tolkien, instead of being a direct adaptation of one of his works, it will feature several key characters and elements from the Lord of the Rings story we all know. Even the most casual pop culture fan is at least somewhat familiar with the one ring forged by Sauron himself at Mount Doom. He created it to be the master ring that he would use to control the bearers of the 19 lesser rings that had been divided among men, dwarves, and elves. This portion of the lore was, of course, embedded into modern pop culture with Peter Jackson's iconic Lord of the Rings movie trilogy. So Sauron's One Ring is without a doubt the most infamous, but what about the 19 lesser rings? Where did they come from and what power do they wield? Well, we're going to look at Tolkien's writings to find out. The Silmarillion is the book that gives us a lot of the backstory for the origins of Middle-earth and the rings themselves. They're addressed in other writings from Tolkien as well, but the Silmarillion is where we find the bulk of it. Anyway, in the Silmarillion, we learn that during the First Age, Sauron, who was originally one of the Maiar like Gandalf or Saruman, was seduced into the service of a dark entity named Morgoth, who sought to overthrow and enslave Arda and Middle-earth. Sauron quickly became one of Morgoth's most dangerous servants due to his ability to assume many forms, and as Tolkien put it, appear noble and beautiful so as to deceive all but the most wary. However, Morgoth was ultimately stopped and defeated by the powerful Valar. Then many years after the fall of his master Morgoth, Sauron sought to rule Middle-earth himself. So he took the form of a fair, wise, and benevolent being, along with the name Anatar, and began to manipulate his way into the inner circles of the elves. Certain elder elves did see through him and refused to let him in, including Elrond, Elrond and Gil-galad. But Sauron was still able to convince many of the elves to work with him, telling them that it was their responsibility to make Middle-earth a better place. Again, he was once one of the Maiar, so he possessed a lot of knowledge that was very useful to the elves and other people in Middle-earth. So he taught them many things that further allowed him to sell the idea that he was being benevolent. And it was during that time, in the Second Age, that Sauron commissioned the skilled craftsmen of the elves and instructed them on how to make the Rings of Power. He walked them through every step of the process, all while binding his will to the Rings. Then in secret, he forged the one master ring in the fires of Mount Doom, imbuing it with all of his strength and will so it would dominate and control even the strongest of those who wore the lesser rings. While using the one ring, he could perceive everything done using the lesser rings of power and even see and control the thoughts of those who wore them. But the elves are extremely perceptive, especially the Eldar, the first and wisest of the elves. So as soon as Sauron placed the one ring on his finger, they immediately became aware of him and all of his true plans to dominate them through the rings he helped them create. The elves then took off the rings, which enraged Sauron, and he waged war on them to get all the lesser rings back in his possession. Through a lot of death and devastation, the Dark Lord managed to gather up all the lesser rings of power, except for the three most powerful, which he obviously wanted the most. Those three are Narya, the Ring of Fire, Nenya, the Ring of Water, and Vilya, the Ring of Air. Sauron coveted those the most because they grant the bearer the ability to slow or stop the decay of time and even change the state of the world. They are also the only three rings that Sauron played no part in creating and have never been touched by his hands. However, while Narya, Nenya, and Vilya were still subject to the One Ring, Sauron Sauron wasn't able to find them because they were given to the wisest of elves for protection. They basically pulled a not today Satan and never used them openly while Sauron possessed the Master Ring. As for who those guardians were, Narya was first held by Gil-galad, who will be appearing in the Rings of Power series. But it was later passed to Curdan, the shipwright, who eventually placed it in the care of Gandalf. We actually see Gandalf wearing Narya in the Lord of the Rings movies as Gandalf the White. Next, Nenya was wielded by Lady Galadriel of Lothlorien, and she maintained possession of it throughout the stories. And lastly, Vilya, as you may have guessed, was given to Elrond of Rivendell, who also also maintain possession of his ring throughout the stories. Both of those characters will also be playing a central role in the Amazon Prime series. But from that time forward until Sauron's defeat, Sauron and the elves were in a constant state of war. And that brings us to the remaining rings of power that Sauron took back into his possession. It wasn't as if he changed his plans for world domination. So he divided them among the other peoples of Middle-earth in order to seduce and corrupt those who were greedy for power. Tolkien broke down the groups of rings in the famous epigraph to the Lord of the Rings, which reads, three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords, in their halls of stone. Nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them. One ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. They actually did a very cool take on that in the prologue of the Fellowship of the Ring movie. And a half quote of it when Galadriel goes to rescue Gandalf in the Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. And speaking of the Lord of the Rings movies, you could actually see two Lord of the Rings legends in person when Elijah Wood and Sean Astin appear at Rose City Comic Con in Portland, Oregon, which runs from September 9th through the 11th. Elijah would of course played Frodo Baggins in all of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and Hobbit movies. And Sean Astin played the role of Samwise Gamgee like no one else could have. We actually saw these two together here in Dallas a few years back and they are freaking hilarious together. The behind the scenes stories they tell about the making of the films and the bond that grew between the cast is well worth the ticket alone. But the con will also feature other great celebrity and comic creator guests including Sylvester McCoy who played Radagast in the Hobbit movies, DC icon Jim Lee, and Giancarlo Esposito who is making noise that he may join the MC 
you sometime in the near future. So if you're in the Portland area or you're planning to travel there, head over to RoseCityComicCon.com forward slash Variant Comics to grab yourself some badges. Then use our discount code Variant Comics at checkout to get 10% off any ticket type. Again, Rose City Comic Con runs from September 9th through the 11th at the Oregon Convention Center, so get your badges now. Now, getting back to the rings, as the previously mentioned epigraph states, other than the three rings kept by the elves, seven were given to the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, and nine were given to mortal men doomed to die. Tolkien tells us in the Silmarillion and in the Unfinished Tales that men had a weakness for greed and were deeply jealous of the elves' immortality, making them the easiest for Sauron to corrupt and the most willing to bend to his will in exchange for power. Not much is known about the nine men who were given the rings other than the Witch King of Angmar, but the rings granted each of them great wealth, power, and long life. Each of the nine men became kings, sorcerers, and or mighty warriors. But it all came with a hefty price tag as the rings perverted and corrupted them over time. Then one by one, they all fell to the power of the One Ring and were transformed into the Nazgul, the Ring Wraiths, doomed to serve Sauron from the Realm of the Shadows. As for the seven rings of power given to the dwarves, they were more stubborn and difficult for Sauron to gain full control over. Tolkien states, once again, in the Silmarillion, the dwarves indeed proved tough and hard to tame. They ill endure the domination of others, and the thoughts of their hearts are hard to fathom, nor can they be turned to shadows. However, the dwarves' greatest weakness was their greed for gold, and that is exactly what Sauron used. According to the writings in the Silmarillion and the History of Middle-earth, seven dwarf kings used their rings of power to amass seven clans and seven treasure hordes, all of which led to their demise and each treasure hoard being plundered by dragons, with the most famous dragon being Smaug the Terrible, a fire drake of the Third Age, who played a major role in the Hobbit story. We're not 100% sure of the name of the clans, but in the History of Middle-earth, the seven clans of the dwarves are Durin's Folk, Firebeards, Broadbeams, Iron Fists, Stiffbeards, Blacklocks, and Stonefoots. So it's a reasonable assumption that those are the seven dwarf clans that spawn from the use of the seven rings of power given to them. Regardless, the power possessed in the rings granted the bearers great wealth and power, only to have it destroy them in the end. It was a pretty consistent pattern is what I'm saying. So that gives you the full origin and nature of the rings of power. The question is, what will the story of the rings look like in the Amazon series? Because like I mentioned earlier, the rings of power series isn't going to be a direct adaptation of Tolkien's work like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Instead, it's something of a reinvention of the second age of Middle Earth using various texts that Amazon purchased the rights to from the Tolkien estate over the course of several years. Thankfully, they seem to have picked up the rights to the Silmarillion and the unfinished tales of Numenor and Middle Earth, or at least parts of them, which will hopefully lead to the show steering much closer to Tolkien's original history of his world. Overall, the licensing situation for Tolkien's work is a hot and confusing mess, so I guess we'll just have to see how it all flushes out on screen. But for the sake of Tim's sanity, I hope they do this story justice. But what do you guys think of the true origin and backstory for the Rings of Power, and are you looking forward to the new Amazon series? Let us know down in the comments. First up for the week of August 31st, we have Thunderbolts issue one. Thunderbolts are getting a brand new team, no doubt because of their recent movie announcement. This time the team will consist of Hawkeye, Spectrum, America Chavez, Power Man, Persuasion, and Guts and Glory. Now we have the Flash 2022 annual. It's been a wild time for Wally West and Linda Park West. Their children are regaining their powers, Wally is bouncing between realms, and Linda is dealing with the mysterious power surge. Here we have Star Wars Obi-Wan issue four. If you're a fan of the Clone Wars series, this is the book you need to be reading. Next up we have Superman War World Apocalypse issue one. It is all led to this, the final battle between Superman and Mongol, and between the Authority and Mongol's unmade champions. The identity of the Hooded Stranger has been revealed, uncovering a shocking betrayal that threatens to crush Superman's rebellion forever. And finally, we have X-Men issue 14. Was Cyclops right? Are any of the X-Men right? Only one could judge them, and the Day of Judgment is here, for good or ill, and the newest team of X-Men must face the truth about themselves and what they have done. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you enjoyed this episode, check out this one right here, and if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, it helps us out. But other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.